tell me about what this does for the rest of the day. What is the knock-on effect of doing something like this in the morning? Because what my head's going to right now is, in this moment, you are choosing to high-five instead of beat yourself. That's to me what you're teaching people to do. Yes. You're training people to choose, make a choice that is going to transfer into every choice they have to make throughout the day. So now when their boss says to them, hey, you haven't done this, you haven't done that, you haven't done this, how's it going to impact? Talk to me about that and what you oh, saw with that. Oh, this is absolutely yeah. awesome. So kind of from a, just sort of the way that people talk about it, this is both what I've experienced and what our audience is constantly uh, writing to us about. And by the way, this is without even having a book out yet. I know. <laughs> this is simply from having people and convincing people around the world to try it. Everybody yeah. says, it's weird, but I got to hand it to you, Mel. This pivots my day and sends it in an entirely different trajectory. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about it all the time. Your mood in the morning impacts your confidence and your productivity all day. Mm -hmm. We know that research from Harvard tells us that when you get intentional about how you're going to show up, it not only boosts your productivity and your confidence and your focus, it also changes your ability to make an impact with people. We also know all the research around what's called emotional contagion. When they did, I didn't even write about this <laughs> in the book, but when you separate uh, leaders into two groups and you show one group of leader, you know, very stressful videos for 20 minutes that make you feel agitated or bummed out, and you throw another group, all these videos with puppies and kittens and Jay Shetty content that's amazing, the leaders that go in to their teams, mm -hmm. within 10 minutes, the teams feel exactly either the negative agitation or the positive agitation, mm -hmm. but it goes even deeper. So the high five habit in the mirror, Jay, it's just the Trojan horse. Of course. There are dozens of tools in this, and we go deep into something you talk about all the time, the reticular activity system, which is the filter in your brain that in real time, I think about it, this is not an elegant way to describe it, I think about it like an electronic hairnet that sits on your brain. And in real time, this sucker is changing. We've all experienced its, its effect when we've shopped for a house or a car. The second you start shopping for your first car, what happens? You start seeing those cars that you're looking mm -hmm. for everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. Everywhere. That is what, that's your RAS. You have a bouncer in your brain that has a massive job. And the job of your bouncer in your brain is to decide what gets into the prefrontal cortex, what passes through. There's only four things, Jay, that actually get through automatically. Your name. We've all experienced it. Oh, did they say Jay? Number two. That happened to me this morning. Really? I had a random person, I think, shout my name out. So I was looking around. Well, that's find... the bouncer in your brain. Yeah. It let it in. And there yeah. were a bazillion other sounds, by the way, that you didn't hear because the bouncer in your brain mm. blocked them out. Mm. The second thing is any immediate threat. So like if you hear a loud noise, you'll kind of like duck, but there are loud noises all day that don't make you do that because the bouncer in your brain is blocking it out. The third one, and this can be tricky for relationships. I know you're writing a book about this. So this, this is any sign that you think your partner might be interested in sex with you or somebody else. You know, this is that jealousy. Hey, are you looking at somebody? <laughs> And then the fourth one, and this is where the treasure is. This is everything. Your brain filters the world based on what you tell it is important to you. Mm. So when you're shopping for a new car, you suddenly say to your RAS, this is important to me. Mm -hmm. And it lets in imagery of the car. This works in positive and negative ways. Trauma is an example of how your filter gets trained by a very negative event. It becomes very important because your nervous system responded to it, so your brain records as much as it can to try to protect you. Mm -hmm. A positive way is by saying something that you talk about, the writing out of your goals, the having visual and environmental triggers that keep these things front of mind. These are ways to train your brain for a positive effect. So one of the things that happens when you start to high five yourself and why it goes so much deeper even than the boost and the, the partnership is that what happens is you're now tapping into an entire field of research called behavioral activation therapy. You talk about it a lot. You know all the science. If you don't know it, there's a very simple way to talk about it. It's called act like the person you want to become. Mm. And the reason why this is so important is we know thinking alone won't get you to change. 
You actually have to take the actions that change everything. And one of the reasons why high-fiving yourself is such a powerful action is the bouncer in your brain, the RAS, it's paying attention. When it suddenly sees you stop the beat down and it sees you act differently, it sees you acting like somebody who actually cares about you, who celebrates you and who sees the high five, it will switch in real time and start to see the world in a way that reflects back the fact that you deserve love and support. Mm. So the more that you act like somebody who loves and supports and believes in themselves by high-fiving themselves, the more your brain changes and the more your reality changes. Now, to your point with toxic positivity, does it change the very real issues people face? Of course not. It does not change the fact that there's discrimination and poverty and trauma and very real obstacles that you may be facing right now. What it changes is you mm. and your ability to face those things and your resilience and your belief that through your attitude and your actions, you can make a positive difference in those things. Yeah. 